Oh, hi. This is Tosh with Tosh Talks, and I am, uh, obviously I'm Tosh. There's no other Tosh here in this room except for me. And I am the book buyer for Book Soup in uh, West Hollywood, otherwise known as Los Angeles, otherwise known in California, otherwise known in the United States of America. And I want to speak to you, I usually talk about books, but we also carry DVDs, but not all DVDs. We're a bookstore that has a small DVD side business on the side. And what we mostly feature or have are DVDs from Criterion. And Criterion is sort of like the Penguin Books of DVD world. Um, every release on this label, Criterion, is a, um, well, basically it's a masterpiece. I don't think they do any bad films on, on Criterion. So when you buy a Criterion DVD, you're getting an incredible, excellent film, as well as probably the best bonus material you can get on a DVD. Uh, including, of course, interviews with the film director, but usually uh, interviews with film scholars. If we're lucky, a documentary on the making of the film or some archival footage of, uh, of being on the set of the film as it's being made. And um, I'm going to talk about the criteria in a second, but I want to speak about a particular passion that I have, and this passion has been ongoing with me for at least 20 years. And I fully cannot explain why I have this passion. And maybe by the time the show is over, um, I'll know. I need to talk to you to find out more about myself. And this is why I do Tosh Talk, as well as tell you about books and et cetera, et cetera. So on the book aspect, what we have is Phantomas. This is actually my own uh, copy, well read, read in the bathtub many times. Read it two or three times over, and it's not more. And Fantomas is a character uh, created by uh, Marcel Alon and Pierre Sauvert. And these two gentlemen uh, were assigned by their publisher to write a pulp novel or a series like around 1908, 1909. They're from Paris. And um, they, wrote a, they made up a, a character by the name of Fantomas, who is a masterful, no, not masterful, a genius criminal actually more of a terrorist. What he does, he terrorizes Paris on a regular basis. And you don't know his identity. You don't know if you know his gender for sure. Is he a man? Is he a woman? Is he a police? Is he a criminal? Who is he? Basically, he's just the lord of evil, the lord of crime, and a man, if he is a man, a master of various zillions of disguises. He can be anything from uh, the postman to a a woman to a, a dog, perhaps. He can be anything, anytime, anywhere. And basically, he does crime not for money reasons alone, but also just to strike terror, just for the sake of it, just for the fun of it. In many ways, he sort of reminds me of the uh, new version of the Joker in the, Bat in the new Batman series, where the Joker just seems to do crime and evil just because he enjoys it, just what he does. And Fantomas is sort of the same figure. And um, Fantomas has an arch enemy, or our hero of sorts, uh, by the name of Juve. And Juve, has a, who, Juve is, the, uh, is a masterful detective of the French police force, or Paris police force. And he has a young assistant, who's not really his assistant, but he's a boy reporter by the name of Fandor. And Fandor and Juve go after Fantomas with incredible passion. In fact, that's the only thing they're interested in, is going after Fantomas. And nothing kills off Fantomas. And, there's, and the whole series is probably about, um, I think overall, like, like 15 to 20 books. Um, it started in 1909. I think it ended in the 20s. But uh, they're incredible books. And um, the edition that's available now is a sort of, not an updated version of this, but, in, but a new reprint of this uh, published by Penguin with an uh, introduction by John Ashbery, the great poet. Now, what's interesting about Fantomas is not only did he appeal to the citizens of its time, but also to the avant-garde uh, movements of that period. Um, everybody from Picasso to Jean Cocteau to um, Apollinaire, the great French poet, were totally devoted to uh, reading the fiction of Fantomas. And um, one gets the impression that they're reading something more into it than maybe than the average uh, reader. We don't know. But in, 19, um, 
1913 through 1914, uh, Louis Fallard, a French filmmaker uh, who worked for Gallimard um, uh, Studios, uh, made a series of films uh, based on Marcel Alain's uh, um, Fantomas. And this is the cover, and this is actually sort of again a reproduction of what Fantomas sort of looks like in the story, but he changes the disguise all the time. If you look back here, he sometimes wears a black mask, all black from head to toe. So there's two little eyes peeping out of the mask, and it looks really horrifying. And also kind of uh, fetishy, if you know what I mean, if you get my drift. And um, so what we have here is, uh, wait, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. We have uh, uh, five films. Uh, one is Fantomas in the Shadow of the Guillotine, Juve versus Fantomas, The Murderous Corpse, Fantomas versus Fantomas. There's a fake Fantomas there somewhere, and The False uh, Magistrate. And um, the beauty of these films, well, again, they were made in 1913, uh, 1914, and of course they were filmed, they're very primitive cinema of sorts, but they were um, also filmed on location, so you actually seen Paris in 1913, 1914, in public spaces and roads, and that alone is fascinating. But what's intriguing is these films are sort of shot during the daytime, and it sort of shows that danger can happen any moment, any place, it can happen anywhere. Whenever Phantomus appears, at least five or six people are going to die. What Phantomus likes to do, like certain crimes, is like he likes to take rats, uh, inject them with poison or with the plague, and then release the rats in Paris, causing disease and mayhem and just total destruction. And why does he do this? Because he enjoys doing it. And we, the viewers, for some reason or another, including me, enjoy this. We actually enjoy terror while we condemn terror. This, of course, has sort of political um, connotations. But also think about it in 1913, 1940, in Paris, World War I was breaking out. So really, the world at that time, as of now, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or the next day. And yet, Fantomas is actually a perfect symbolic character who represents that we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or later. Things change rapidly or they don't change. And then there's always a sense of death, destruction, just right around the corner. And how do we control that? And Fantomas, the character says, you can't control that because I do evil whenever I feel like to do evil. So that is something that uh, sti sticks with me for a very long time. These films uh, are excellent. Uh, again, the Surrealists had a great admiration for uh, these series. But these are like great action-packed films, uh, character twist galore, excellent films. And I've seen this many, many times. If you play it all together, it's like about six hours long. And it's a fantastic uh, DVD set, and we have this at BookSoup. I'm very, very happy about this, as well as the Fantomas books. And I think we have about two or three other Fantomas titles. Most are out of print and hard to find. And I do have like a rarish collection of uh, Fantomas books in English, but um, we'll see about that in the future. Now, the Criterion stuff. Um, well, again, I want to point out that Kino uh, put this out, and they're an excellent DVD company as well. But uh, the main focus of our DVD collection at BookSoup are the Criterion DVDs. And I'm just choosing two of my current favorites. Uh, one is uh, The Testament of Dr. Mabuse. Now, Dr. Mabuse is very similar based on Fantomas. He's another masterful criminal who uh, Fritz Lang, uh, the great film director Fritz Lang, who did Metropolis and the movie M, among other things. Uh, uh, during the silent era, he, he uh, created the Dr. Mabuse character. <coughs> and Dr. Mabuse is another person who is a total uh, a madman who loves to do crime for the sake of crime, but actually a little bit more political. He likes to um, maneuver the stock market, for instance, to cause a huge uh, depression. Just a little hobby of his, actually. And what also is intriguing about this actual film, The Testament of Dr. Mabuse, is the dialogue that he speaks out of. He's actually speaking, at the time, uh, the party line of the Nazis without crediting it to the Nazis. So he obviously, he's a madman who is reciting Nazi talk. Um, you can imagine uh, the Nazis were not that happy about this film, yet Dr. Goebbels, the, the main uh, Nazi propagandist, wanted to hire Fritz Lang to make films for Nazi Germany. 
uh, legend is, or story is, never really clear that Fritz Lang said yes and then left for America the next day. So that's that story. Dr. Mabuse, Testament of Dr. Mabuse, excellent film. And this just came out, brand new release on Criterion, The Night of the Hunter. Southern goth to the max. Horror story to the max. And yet a children's story, almost like a children's fairy, st a children's fairy tale gone worse or gone bad. It's to, it's, uh, the main character is played by Robert Mitchum, who is a traveling preacher of sorts. Well, he calls himself a preacher, but basically he's a, um, a lady killer. Not only a lady killer in the sexual sense, but he actually kills women. So he's a serial killer. And this is a story about him hooking up with a widow by the name of Shelley Winters. He marries Shelley Winters for her money, kills her, but he can't find the money. Only the two children of hers, that are actually Robert Mitchum, the character's stepkids, know where the money is. So Robert Mitchum goes over the whole countryside chasing these two kids around. Uh, the film was directed by Charles Lawton, who is more known as an actor than a film director. Charles Lawton only made one film, and this one film is an absolute masterpiece. Uh, James A.G. wrote this screenplay, and we have this a book soup, and also we have the original novel of Night of the Hunter, which is technically almost, well, it's like print on demand, and we get very little discount getting in the stock, but we do get it because you know, we sell it all the time. And plus, we have various books on the making of The Night of the Hunter. And what makes this Criterion edition exquisite are the bonus cuts. There's like a two-hour two documentary. Not a documentary. It's actually two hours of Charles Lawton uh, directing the actors. And that sounds maybe boring. But it's absolutely fascinating, really fascinating. And that's worth the price of the DVD alone to see uh, or hear Charles Lawton direct the actors. And um, excellent stuff, excellent film. So we always have the full line of Criterion as much as possible. And we also sometimes connect the Criterion DVD with the actual book that, it, that the film is based on. And um, I like to spend my life reading and watching movies at the same time, if possible. A glass of wine, watching the movie, and reading the book at the same time is an exquisite type of aesthetic ecstasy. And with that, I will see you next week. This is Tosh Talks. I have a great time. Bye-bye.